Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a reflection in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is so cool because we get to combine a ton of different ideas and concepts and techniques into one image in Photoshop. We're gonna show you how to use a smart object to create an image as well as a reflection of that image. Then I'm gonna show you how to use smart filters to actually give it a ripple effect and make the reflection look like it's in the water. Then we're gonna show you how to update your smart object and have it automatically update in your document. It's gonna be a really fun episode. All right, so jumping into Photoshop, we've got our image. This is actually just from fotolia.com. I typed in landscape and a lake because I want, to, I want to have our image as well as the reflection here. And this is from Canada. It's, a, it's from Canada, with love from Canada. So let's go ahead and start off with our type tool. I'm gonna hit T for the type tool. And the font we're using is called Woodcut Regular. And we're gonna put a link to that in the description right down below. We got it from dafont.com. So let's go ahead and type here. We want our color to be white. And we're just gonna type it here, Canada. That's right, folks, Canada. This is what I was thinking would be kind of like, uh, like a postcard, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and put our Canada right there. That looks pretty good. Now, we do want to create a reflection for this as well. Now, normally we would probably just like duplicate this layer and flip it upside down, but I want to be able to change this icon at any point in time. And anytime you want to be able to like automatically like change something and have it automatically update, a smart object is the best way to do that. So let's go ahead and show you how to create a separate document that we're going to use as our smart object. So here on our type right there, I'm going to right click and we're going to go to duplicate layer. Now here with our duplicate copy, we can call this whatever we want. We'll just call it uh, smart OBJ, smart object. Here we go. Now our document here, by default, it's going to try to duplicate it on the same document, but we actually want to choose new. We're going to choose a new document and there we go. We'll just call that smart OBJ as well. That's going to be the name of the document. So let's hit okay. There we go. And what it does is it duplicates it. You can see right there, it duplicates the layer and it puts it on its own new document. So let's go ahead and crop this in a little bit. I don't need it to be that big. So we're gonna crop this in. Just grab C for the crop tool, crop that in and hit enter. Okay, now we wanna save. This is really, really important because we need to be able to place this document in the other. So let's go to file. We'll go down to save as, and it's already smart obj.psd because we named it earlier. So there we go. Let's hit save and we're good to go. Okay. So now what we have are two documents. We have smart OBJ, smart object here, and we have our Fotolia. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this where it says Canada. Let's hit the delete button there. And now we wanna pull our smart object into this document. Now the best way to do this, I don't wanna just pull the layer, I wanna pull the whole document. So we're gonna to go to file and I'm gonna go down to place linked. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna grab that other file and it's gonna stick it inside of this one. And anytime I update the other file, it automatically updates this one too. So that's why it's really cool. So let's go to place linked. There we go. We'll click on smart object.psd and hit the place button. Cool, let's hit enter. So there's our object. Now we're gonna do this again for the reflection. So let's try it again. File, place linked. Okay, smart obj.psd and hit place and then hit enter. So now we have a couple different versions of our logo, of our actual object right here. So let's go ahead and start making this look a little bit more like a reflection. I'm gonna hit control or command T, which brings up our transform dialog. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go to flip vertical. There we go. Now let's go ahead and move both of these to a place where it's gonna look a little bit more like there we go, they're in the image. All right, and we can move all this stuff at any point in time. Now, we've got our regular object and we've got our object that's upside down. 
So why did we create this smart object? Why did we go about creating a whole new document and then linking back? Well, this is why. I'm gonna hit T for my type tool and we're just gonna click right over here. I'm gonna create a new bit of type and I'm, we're just gonna call it beautiful, beautiful Canada. All right, now let's go ahead and change our type a little bit. We want this to be, I'm just gonna put Helvetica new, regular. There we go. And we're gonna make our size a little bit smaller. We wanna create something that really does look, you know, like it. It would be a, a, an ad or whatever you have it. All right, beautiful Canada. Let's go ahead and put that right over there. Okay, so now our main document, let's say you were working with a designer and you were like going back and forth on logos and concepts and things like that. All I have to do here, because this is my smart object that's automatically placed in there, all I have to do is save this document by hitting Command S, there we go, and you're gonna see it's gonna automatically update here in my other image, which is so wonderful. If I decide, oh, you know what, that looks good, but let's see how that looks in capital, we're gonna put the, we're gonna hit the all caps here on the beautiful. Just hit Command S and save that document, and there you have it. So we can change this at any time. Type it here. Let's just see. All right, we'll type welcome to, welcome to Canada. And we'll make that a little bit smaller. And go ahead and place it right about there and hit Command S to save that. Yeah, you know what? That needs to be brought down a little bit. There we go, welcome to Canada. Now the reason I love this guys is because it's updating on our reflection as well. So anytime I change this, I can change this a year from now, it doesn't matter. It's gonna update here on my main image as well as the reflection because they're both sourcing the same document, which is very, very cool. All right, so that's our base. That's how we're getting started here with the object and the reflection. Now it's time to jump in. We're gonna show you really cool things we can do with our smart filters that are gonna help it actually look like it's a reflection in the water. All right guys, so now we're gonna apply some filters onto the reflection to make it actually look like it's a reflection. So let's go ahead and zoom in here a couple of times and look at the reflection in the water. Now you can see it's a little bit blurred and we definitely have this like speckling. You can see where like the water is creating ripples here from our, from our, like it's not a clear snapshot of the mountain, right? It's, it's like that. So we need to do the same thing with our type. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that you can do to actually make something look like it's in the ocean. So let's create a new layer and we're gonna go ahead and just create a circle. Now I'm just doing this so to like kind of show you guys a point right now. You don't have to do the same thing if you're following along. So let's create a circle there. I'm gonna fill this with white. Let's hit okay. There we go. And now I'm gonna to go to filter. We're gonna to go to filter gallery. And the filter that we wanna use is called ocean ripple. It's really good, it creates a really realistic ocean ripple. Okay, but here's the only issue guys. Because I only have white on this layer, it's just white with transparent, I don't actually have enough information to create the ocean ripple. You can see this circle still looks perfectly like a circle, right? It's because it doesn't have anything else to kind of like create that effect. So if I hit okay, technically I just applied an ocean ripple filter to this perfect circle, but nothing happened. It doesn't look any different. And that's because we need to create another contrast in color so we can actually like do something. So we'll show you how to do that. On a new layer, I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll create, there we go, a square. I'm gonna fill this with black. All right, or 50% gray. Let's go ahead and hit black. All right, now let's go ahead and align these and hit Command E to merge them together. So now on this layer, it just looks like this. It's a white circle around a black. So I'm only doing this to show you why we have to create the black background, because you actually do. Um, now what we're gonna do is go to Filter. We'll go to Filter Gallery again. And now we're gonna click on Ocean Ripple. And you can see now because the black it gives it something to work with, right? It's not just a transparent background. So the black gives it something to work with, and now you can go in here, you can change the size of your ripple as well as your magnitude of the ripple. There we go. 
and we're gonna hit okay, and that's what it looks like. Now, it's actually nice in this case because it is a white circle on a black background, and there's a blending mode that will make that black totally disappear, and that blending mode is screen. So go in your blending mode from normal down to screen, and there we have it. This looks like it's ocean ripple here in the water. So that was a bit complicated, I know, and it was an explanation of a circle, which is like, that's not the logo, but it's important. Now you know the idea why we're about to do what we're about to do, and that's gonna be, we're gonna place, place a black background on our other document. So we're gonna be able to do this filter on this image. Okay, I know it was a lot to get to. That's the most complicated thing we had to do in this episode. So if you got that, we're well, good to go. All right, so now let's take what we've learned and actually apply it in our image. So we're gonna just delete that circle. We don't need it anymore. Now this smart object.psd, what I need to do is create a solid color adjustment layer and we're gonna go all the way to black and we're gonna bring that below everything else. Okay, and hit Command S to save this. Now, you're gonna see it automatically updates here, which it did what we want, but obviously it doesn't look good now. So, what we're gonna do is shift click the two of these smart objects and we're gonna change them from normal down to screen. So now, it looks the exact same, but what we have is the ability to apply that ripple filter on this text. So let's go ahead and try that. So here's our smart object. This is our reflection right here. We're gonna zoom in, there we go. And we're gonna go to filter and down here to filter gallery. Okay, now we'll go ahead and bring our size down a little bit. There we go, let's go ahead and hit okay and see how that looks. All right, so there's a little bit of ripple there in the water. Now the wonderful thing guys about using our smart filters is I can turn this off or on at any time. I can change this. If I want to, let's say I want our ripple size to be a bit bigger, I just double click right here on my filter. There we go. I can bring this down and bring up my ripple size. There we go and hit OK and it's going to update here on my image. You know what, in this case I think our ripple size could actually be brought down a little bit. Maybe our magnitude. Ooh, That's cool. Alright, let's hit OK. There we go, that's looking good. So that's why we need to create a black background on the other guy there. Okay, so that looks good. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's go ahead and apply a little bit of a blur, right? It's too much in focus. So on this layer again, we'll go to Filter, Blur, and over to Gaussian Blur. We'll give it a little bit of a blur. And again, our job here is to make it look like it's blending into the water. And you can see right there, it actually is starting to do a good job. So we can turn this off and on we can see how that looks. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is give it a little bit of blue. You can see here in the background, these mountains are like brown and gray, but in the reflection, they're blue. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control or Command U to bring up our hue saturation on this layer. You can see it's listed right there. We're gonna click on this Colorize button, and now I'm gonna actually take my lightness down a little bit and bring our saturation up. All right, now we want to choose a nice blue color. There we go, and we'll choose a saturation that looks good for us. And our lightness we can play around with too as well. Two as well. All right, there we go. That's looking good. So each of these I can turn off or on at any point in time, which is really nice. Now, the filter gallery, the ripple actually caused my text to be a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So we're gonna hit Command T, we're gonna scale this down a little bit and then hit Enter, and that should do a pretty good job there. Okay, so here's our smart object, looking great. Now, I'm gonna go put a layer mask on there by clicking on my layer mask, and we're gonna use a radial, sorry, a linear gradient, just going from black to white, just so we kind of fades it up. You can see just a little bit of fade, it's gonna help it look a bit better. All right, very nice, now it's time to go ahead and place our text so we can bring it down a little bit over there. Let's see, let's go ahead and move the two of these to look like it's in the image a little bit more. Welcome to Canada, that is so cool. And we'll just put a layer mask on this layer here. 
There we go. On this layer mask, I'm going to paint black right over top of the rock so the ripple doesn't appear over top of the rocks. All right, there we go. That looks really, really good, Nick Eyes. Now let's go ahead and see here, it says welcome to Canada. Let's change it again. Like, we'll just try hitting our type tool here. And we'll just try enjoy beautiful Canada. All right, right over there looks pretty good. And Command S to save that. And you can see it automatically updates here on my smart object, which is so wonderful that it does it here and in the reflection as well. Let's just bring these, maybe we want our enjoy beautiful to be centered. There we go, enjoy beautiful Canada. I actually liked it a little bit smaller and over there off to the left and there we go, a little bit smaller again. So I'm able to make these updates here in this document and everything automatically updates in my final image, including the reflection with our layer effects on it and everything else that we've done for this image. All right, guys, and there we have it. That's the best way to create a postcard and a reflection in Photoshop. All right, guys, now I know that was a bit complex. You can totally do this on your own. Just follow these key steps. First, go ahead and design your type that you want to be in your image. Then we're gonna duplicate that and put it in a new document. And this is gonna be our reference document. Now, go ahead and save that document. You wanna use a layered file like a PSD or a TIFF. I saved it as Smart OBJ. Then go back into your landscape and go to File and down to Place Linked. We're gonna do that twice, once for the actual object and once for the reflection. Then we took one of the objects and flipped it upside down, making the reflection. And we showed you how we can change the text in the original document and how it will automatically update in your image. Now after that, it's time to apply our filters. And because we're using a special filter called Ocean Ripple, we have to have a black background on our white text. So we showed you how to do that using a circle. Then we went back to our original document. We used a black background and then on our photo, we changed both of the layer blending modes to screen blending mode. Now screen blending mode makes anything that's white visible and anything that's black invisible, giving us the perfect thing we need to do in order to get rid of the black visually, but also give us the option for creating our filter. And then from there, we're just playing around with our filters. We add a hue saturation to this, giving it a little bit of blue color to make it look like it's in the lake and gave it a Gaussian blur. All of these things can be changed at any point in time by simply clicking on the smart filter and altering your properties. All right guys, and that's all there is to it. We can go ahead and change the text in our original document and it's gonna automatically update in our image with the reflection and all the filters applied to it, which is so, so cool. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Super complex, but if you got it, well, you just might consider yourself a Photoshop champion. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can hit that button right on your screen and we'll send you free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea for anything you want, just ideas in general, or a question about today's episode or a comment today's episode, just leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Woo! Champions. Man. You're, you're the champion for watching this. Man, I am nailing this episode. Woo! It's only my second time recording it. <laughs> I wonder if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> Considering I totally blew the first one. Woo! Man, good episode.